Hi, this is Keiko from Brooklyn Shoe Space. Today on Shoe Talks, we're inviting Catherine from Zuzu Shoes. I have met Catherine about maybe six and a half, seven years ago. Uh, she used to come to our old space as well to prototype her sandals. Um, let's see. I'm going to post her this comment. Been a comment. Okay, and let's see if Suzu Shoes has joined us. Yes, she has. I'm inviting her. And her. Sh hi, hi, Catherine. Hey, Keiko. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm it's good. been so long. I know, long time. <sighs> yeah. How's how's the quarantine going? And how are you? Are, are, do you have to be locked down right now? How is it in Buenos Aires? Um, so quarantine is still pretty strict. Um, yeah. You know, for me, honestly, I pretty much always work from home. So that part is, is hasn't really changed that much. But in order mm -hmm. to, you know, leave the city limits, you have to have a permit to travel. Um, wow. How do you get, get the permit? You apply for it online. And uh -huh. you have to download this app and you have to take your temperature and they give it to you and it's good for 48 hours. Oh, and wow. Apply. Yeah. And you have to have a good reason to travel too. Like you have to say, I'm traveling to take care of an older person or I'm traveling to. Oh, wow. Ooh. I lost you for a second. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I'll come in. Let me just kill it so that. <laughs> They don't call back. <laughs> oh, are you sure? You're okay? Okay. Yeah. A second. Hold on. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Um, it's so. okay. And have, have your workers been able to come in or not yeah. really? So everyone's mm. working at home. Um, mm. um, we, like, we're, our workshop isn't... We could probably open our workshop now, but the problem is that um, most of our workers use public transportation to to get there. So, okay. you know, they we don't want to put them at risk, and also, no, uh, it would be difficult for them to say that their work is really essential. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like they have a they have like a gradual opening up process by. Um, industry and i'm not really sure to what extent it's enforced so just oh, okay we're, we're having everyone work from home for the time being yeah which you can do which is great so you kind yeah. of distributed everything yeah 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 that that's the only thing it's like everyone lives far apart luckily mm -hmm. um you know uh some of our artisans have like you know spaces already set up for work but uh -huh. but yeah the distance is always a challenge here <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I bet. But then the, also getting components and markets and that kind of stuff, too. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So do you feel like end of June you can reopen, maybe? Or you're, like, just not sure, I, unsure? We're not sure. I think uh, yesterday the president had another sit-down with all of his ministers to see, yeah. like, the, what the situation was. And it seems like the contagion has peaked. They said that the peak will, will be in a couple of weeks, so... I don't okay. Think this will go back to normal by the end of the month. <laughs> no. Oh my goodness. Okay. Got it. Hang in there. Yeah. yeah. But I wanted to go back in time a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And talk about your line, how you got into the shoe industry, the business, um, and how you started Zuzu. Okay. Well, um, I would say my shoe story started uh, when I was going to fashion school and I took a shoemaking course. Like I was um, like, I guess fashion school wasn't, wasn't what I, what I expected. And I was really struggling with uh, garment construction. Like, I don't know. I think it was just like, there was, there, there were a lot of parts of it that I didn't like mm -hmm. as much as I thought I would. Mm -hmm. So I started taking accessories and shoe courses and I really loved um, working with my hands and the instruction and it came to the end of my shoe course at fashion school and I was like, but I need to make more shoes. How can I yeah. continue to do this? Is the school open during the summer? Will you let me give me a key? How do I make it happen? <laughs> I 
it was like, there's this woman in, in Brooklyn named Keiko who has her own shoe line, but also gives shoe lessons. And so I was like, immediately am obsessed with signing up. So I took some shoemaking courses with you, but I was also, and then, you know, some years went by and I was, I started freelancing in the industry. And I also, at the same time, um, met my partner, boyfriend, dude. <laughs> Husband, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who, um, you know, I started traveling back and forth to Buenos Aires at that time and discovered the industry here. And mm -hmm. so I spent years freelancing and traveling and I took workshops, shoemaking workshops here and just kind of cobbled together a like kind of a shoe career for myself <laughs> and um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For a few years I was kind of burned out of living in New York working as a freelancer and um I got a huge push <laughs> to start uh my collection and at that point I had enough contacts to yeah. give it a year so that's yeah the story. yeah so how did you come up with the name? What's the story behind the name? Uh, so I was thinking about um, just how uh, the actress Josephine Baker was mm -hmm. like ahead of her time in a lot of ways. And mm -hmm. she was a black woman who was born poor in the deep South. Mm -hmm. But she had this um, unique talent of entertaining people and making them mm -hmm. laugh. Mm -hmm. And she found a way to make her way to Europe and thrive in the in the entertainment industry. And mm -hmm. um, it got to the point where she was the lead in a movie called Zuzu. And uh -huh. at the time, it was the first major motion picture that a Black woman had started. And uh -huh. not only that, she went on to be a Spy, like a resistance spy, she uh -huh. was a rights activist, like she was uh -huh. just the epitome of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's why I chose the name. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, do you, I know you um, started, then you traveled back and forth, and now you moved there, and yes. then you were working with artisans, but then I saw somewhere in Instagram that you also kind of brought your workers in house and you kind of have your studio. Oh, is yeah. That, is, that, is that how it works now? So, okay, so when I first started, we mm -hmm. were, we've gotten some contacts. At, I say we, because Mariano is like kind of, he's, he's pretty much my business partner, but he's, I don't know, he's more like a chief operating office officer, let's say, or maybe a yeah. but but yeah. um, And your cheerleader, the biggest cheerleader too leader on top of that yes yeah so like with his help you know there are a lot of like in the beginning there are a lot of like of course language barriers and cultural barriers mm. so you know I really needed him to like you know make any sort of progress with like the shoemaking dudes here because as you can imagine it's like very um male dominated and yeah I don't know I think it's like it, it I think it was um very beneficial to have someone on the inside saying yes. this is what I need. So anyway, first we were going around to different workshops, different really. So the story here is that the footwear industry is dying. Right. Um, because um, there are a lot of up and up, like economic ups and downs in the country and mm -hmm. not many shoe factories have survived it. Yeah. And what you have are a lot of uh, artisans who at one time worked in a factory mm -hmm. but couldn't afford to really keep on making shoes for a living because there just mm -hmm. wasn't to go around right so they start to kind of be their own freelancers picking up gigs whenever they can so it's just right. like talking to a sewer who knows a cutter who knows a laster who knows a yeah. solar and so yeah. that's the way we scrapped together a, a, a team, team. Mm. and um and I think like at the beginning of last year, we were tired of running around the entire city trying to like, it was like baking a cake, but like, you know, in New York City, 
but like your kitchen's in Brooklyn, but you have to go to Queens for the flour. <laughs> and, you know, you have to go to like Staten Island. It's like for the eggs. Yeah. <laughs> to Manhattan to put the icing on it. Like oh. that's literally what, what making shoes was like here. And so um, like, we were like, well, let's like, if we had our own workshop, let's just give it a try. And uh, we live in a, a small, like apartment here, but it has two levels and a garage. So mm, nice. kind of room to put a small workshop and workshop by workshop, I mean, like the guy who lasts the shoes. And then at the end of every production cycle, the person who cleans them and like gives mm -hmm. them is the sewing and the, no, the cutting we also did in the workshop, but the sewing and the defor deformato, which is like, the process by which we polish the, the, the leather edges, that's mm -hmm. done outside, that's always outsourced. But, um, so we decided to try that in our garage and that, that went on for about six months and it was like, okay, this is good, this works, but honestly, we're tired of being surrounded by shoe things all the time. Like there was no <laughs> line between work and- And home. Home, so we looked for a small space close by in our neighborhood. Uh -huh. and, like, um, Oh, I'm so horrible with, with square meterage, but it's, it's a tiny, tiny space. Um, but it's in a really great location and um, it's a, small, a short bike right away. And basically um, the, the guy who puts the shoes together works there on a regular basis. And then every few days when we're done with a, um, a production run, the guy who comes and puts the finishing touches. Uh, uh, Welcome. And Mm -hmm. And then the cutter will come by at the beginning of the process, but then we just bundle everything up and take it to the sewer. And then we mm -hmm. take the sold shoes to the deformador and mm -hmm. back. So that's how our process is. Oh, that's so great. That's so great. And then you ship, it's made to order, which is really nice. And you're... Le yeah, so... And you sorry, go ahead. Sorry, there, there's like a little bit of lag time. Sorry about that. But <laughs> then... <laughs> <laughs> um I love the made to order and your lead time is actually really short so I'm really impressed with um the way you can make well okay so part of that is like it's kind of semi made to order like we, we we're not like exclusively made to order because we have some best sellers that we know we won't have a problem selling but then there are some things where it's like it's new or it's like a color and it's like, you know, do we need to make a size 42 in this? I don't know. <laughs> so those kinds of things are made to order. But then the other things that we're kind of still trying to get a feel for, we actually cut and sew the uppers and keep them in a box. Mm. And way when we get the order in, it's like, you know, the uppers all are flexible. Yeah. So, you know, you can probably take it up a size or down a size. So that gives us like more flexibility. So that's why we're able to shorten the lead time. That is so great. That's so great. Um, so how many pairs a week do you kind of work on together? Like, do you kind of go in batches of like five or 10? Um, it really depends. Like I would say that the optimal amount is mm -hmm. like 20 to 25 pairs at a time. Wow, wow. I mean, that's to, great. To the most efficient, like we would cut 25 pairs all at once, have them send them to sew all at once. And then um, once the guy lasts them, and I'd say that process would be like 10 days, mm -hmm. beginning to end, like from cutting to, you know, ready in a box, good to ship. Cool. And how do you get your inspiration and like also leather colors? You have really beautiful colors all the time. Thank you. Um, well, it definitely took a while to find like the right suppliers. Like, um, are I, they all local? Locally they're, all, not they're all, um, based in Buenos Aires. I don't bring any leather in, but some of their leathers are imported. So I think that like, I think maybe the, the finishing process is done here, which is really weird because they export their leather. <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I source everything locally, and then the color, I really just, I don't get to design my own palette. I really just choose from what's available. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'd love to I'd find my own palette though, really. That's right. Like, that would be like, I think that's another answer to the question. A question, yeah. that if I had unlimited resources, I would totally develop my own colors. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have a thing with colors. I remember like whenever you come to the studio, you had like all the best colors somehow like all on you, but beautiful and also amazing jewelry. You always have amazing jewelry. Thank you. <laughs> so you have mutual jewelry, right? for sure. Yeah. Um, and who do you get inspired by? Do you have like a muse? Um, I, I honestly really don't have, um, like, you mean like someone I, in mind that I'm always designing for? Kind of, yeah. Being at her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always design what I want or need or love. Mm -hmm. just, just that, basically. I mean, from season to season, like, um, my inspiration can be, you know, I don't work the way corporate lines right. do. I mean, of course, there's some inspiration, but like, you know, here in Argentina, and also due to the size, you know, the scale yep. of the company, I have to work with what's available. So yep. I don't know, like, I can put some, you know, wild reference on the wall, but it's probably not going to be doable here, you know? Mm -hmm. but, but you take I it as a design challenge. Yeah. And try to make it what I want but mm -hmm. like for example something I I would love to figure out how to do here is is, weave, is woven leather mm, yes it's something that's like you know we've all seen a woven leather shoe but here it's like either the people who who, who uh, did it no longer do it or they're having it done in Brazil right so, and yeah. you want to keep it local yeah too yeah for the time being at least yeah yeah no absolutely um are you working on anything for yourself at the moment like design wise or physically some shoes? Um, well i'm mentally designing a couch for my workspace uh -huh. I, a um i've been like my studio is pretty empty it just has like um a couple of boards and some uh -huh. Ottomans, but what I really need is a comfortable place to like, you know, have some creative time. Yes. <laughs> and um, the dimensions of our hall are really complicated or really challenging for anything that's like off the market. So, oh, okay. So I'm thinking of like uh, how I can build a couch in a dimension, Ooh. something modular or. Um, a set, like, you know, something that has assembly required. Yeah, yeah. What kind of material would you use? Probably wood, and um, there's this, um, there's, like, this high, what do they call it, when it's, like, this, um, like, for high friction or, like, high high traffic um, sateen. It, mm -hmm. it, it's so luxurious, but it's actually mm -hmm. really for, like, you know, a lot of um, wear. And it has like this tweedy mid-century feel to uh -huh. it. So, uh -huh. um, yeah, that's those are the materials I was thinking. Oh, cool! Very cool. Do you feel like you can get those materials around you, or like you're? It, yeah, yeah. Here, like uh, there, I don't know. Maybe in New York too. I don't. I'm not really sure. I remember anymore. But here, it's. I feel it's more common to find something custom made or like. Something custom made and it's not like oh wow it's custom made and it's right it's so expensive <laughs> no right it's just a, it's just a service they offer it's like okay that's well oh, amazing yeah <laughs> oh so, yeah that's cool do you have any shoes that you can show us that's any of yours yeah of course so this is um this is the Eugenia flag. Mm, you, oh, oh, Eugenia. Okay, I've been calling it Eugenia. Sorry. I, <laughs> Eugenia. We call it that, but it's Eugenia. I love it. I okay. love it. Um, and then here is um, the Yamaya uh, mule. Uh huh. Which and, one is your favorite? Um, the one I wear the most um, year round is probably the Eugenia right now. Like that one is the most comfortable, most versatile style for me. And then in mm -hmm. the summer, 
club wearing the Delfina sandal, which is, wow. um, uh, it has like a little strappy, it has a little block heel, but like a strappy upper. Mm -hmm. um, it's comfortable, but it's also a little bit dressy and feminine. Yeah. I like. And then this one is another one that I'm proud of. It's um, a um, Ooh, loafer uh, with a uh, leather chain detail. Uh -huh. And I'm proud of that because um, we had to like make the uh, the die the die cut the dies ourselves. Yeah. And wow. That whole process. It wasn't like like I think one of the biggest challenges about doing things here is that like or doing things ourselves is sourcing everything everything and figuring out how to make it it's not like like I can you know tell an agent I, I want this and then mm -hmm. I get it in the mail so right yeah no absolutely it's really cool what's the style called again sorry I think I lost you for a second Oop. I, are you there I can't hear you. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to I'm going to invite you back on, okay? Sorry. No, it's all good. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we I lost you for a second. So, what 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 was that low first style called again? The first one, the gold one. This one. Uh, no, no, no. The um, the new. The, it looks new to me, but the one with the leather details. Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, this one. This one is the uh, Pilar mule. Oh. No, sorry, Pilar loafer. Loafer. Very mm -hmm. cool. Thank yeah, you. I I remember you started with mules. Uh, not sorry, mules. Um, loafers in the beginning and mules, right? Yeah, yeah. loafer. They still sell. Um, well, there was one style that I started with that, that kind of fell off. It was like a sling back, but um, mm -hmm. I started with the mule and the loafer, and I still sell them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love it that you keep the style, and then you add colors, you change the colors, the textures a little bit. Yeah. It's honestly, like, I think that um, making things here has, like, had an effect on, like, not only the way I shop and design, mm -hmm. but it's like, you know, it takes so much to develop a style here. Like, you know, just between like traveling and like sourcing things, it just mm -hmm. takes so much that like, once I develop a style, like it, I wanted to stick, be able to stick around for a while. Yeah, yeah. So I try oh. to design things that are, that lean towards classic or that can at least stay relevant for, for uh, a while. Time. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> right. And also for the makers as well. I think the makers, like the longer they can make that style, like it's better, Again. better. I feel like somebody asked a viewer asked Mari asks, hi, great interview with very helpful info. Just curious about how do you get the shoes from Argentina supply stuffs? So how do I get the shoes from the supplies from Argentina? Yeah, I think that's what she means. How do you get the shoes from Argentina? So maybe about shipping as well as maybe so sourcing. I think sourcing, you said you source locally. Yes, yes. I source, I source locally and I just, I just ship with DHL. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Okay. I'm going to just check if there's any more questions. Okay. Um, yeah. And so right now you're in your studio, you said, but it's in not in your workshop workshop, but like in your design studio, kind of? It's, yeah, the studio, whatever you, okay. whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Very but, cool. But my, my, that's out it. of the house, yeah. Offsite now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I'm going to ask what I have all these questions. That's random questions. But I also had somebody for those new designers wanting to start their own line. Do you have any advice? You're the you're the OG now. Oh, oh, I can't hear you. Ooh. 
Okay, hold on. Can everybody else hear? I think I'm losing her. Am I losing you? Ooh, there's somebody who says, just wanted to say, I love your work. Got my first pair in the mail the other week. And I feel like new woman, your shoes are so powerful. Oh, you can't. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, call you right back. Sorry guys, I'm going to add her on again. Can everybody else hear me? Uh, oop. Can everybody else hear me? Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear oh, you. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Sorry, I lost you. <laughs> yeah, some, um, there was a comment that just wanted to say I love your work, got my first pair in the mail the other week and feel like a new woman. Your shoes are oh. powerful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love it that you you mentioned that you design with the woman in mind. Yeah. For thank them you. Too. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. you, but not All right. Cool. So that was, yes, out Lawson. That was her. Yeah. So my question was from somebody was that if those new designers who want to start their own line, since you're the OG now, Mm -hmm. um on what would you advise them if they want to start their own line what's like a tip that you would like to share okay well i would say to find a way to lower your living expenses if you need to make a living from what you're doing like you know if you have help from a spouse or family Mm -hmm. ignore ignore that tip but if you don't <laughs> then <laughs> if you don't then definitely try to lower your living expenses because you know I think that'll help help you make decisions out of growth instead of I don't know safety or fear um self-finance if you mm -hmm. can I would say mm -hmm. and um don't be afraid to start small yeah yeah. No, I agree. And have your own voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's important to um, make something that I think has, has a reason to exist. I mean, in the sense that you really, I think it's really important to find, you know, that little touch that only you can do yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's great. Um, if you had unlimited resources, I think we t touched on it mm -hmm. a little bit before, but if you have any others, if you have unlimited resources and time in the world, what kind of shoes would you make and for who? Ooh, okay. That was a fun question. Um, so one thing, I have multiple answers. The one thing I would do is um, I would weave almost all of the styles in the collection out of raffia. Ooh, you know, yeah. you know, in Morocco. Yeah, I, yeah. Lo I, I love that technique. And yeah. I really just want to <laughs> do that somehow. And then um, the other thing I would do is I would love the chance to um, design shoes as part of a flight attendant's uniform, like Ooh. just like chic, comfortable yes. shoes. Yes, because yeah, you're right there. Right? I wondered because everybody wears different shoes and some look super uncomfortable. Some look super uncomfortable or just super ugly. <laughs> like, yes. like it doesn't have to be this way. <laughs> yeah. And also, and also like, I think it's wild that some flight attendants wear these like really bright, like almost like loud colors like um i was looking at a uh, klm like they wear like this bright bright blue it's like ridiculous but i would love to design shoes for their uniform <laughs> yeah why you not know? that's i think that's great yeah, yeah. That would i be think really they fun. usually they have like a color code right it's like you have to wear black or like yeah right but yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's oh. strict 
There's somebody I... who asks. Oh, do you want to keep continue? Do you have another one? Oh, no, no, no. Is there another question? I do have another one, but I can wait until the question has <laughs> been answered. Somebody, Lali Simone asks, why do you recommend self-financing? I did that, but I'm slowly realizing that starting with even less than 10,000 would have helped a lot. Wait, start? Wait, what does that mean? Well, I, I think what hmm. I meant by self-financing is um, don't, you know, if you maybe... Maybe invest. start with a little bit of saving. Yeah, sa start with a little bit of savings. Oh, I see. You know, yeah. uh, instead of um, you know going for an investor or or a personal loan right away, or even right. even a zero APR credit card. You know, like I mean, I I I just think that getting into debt should be avoided at all costs. <laughs> yeah, smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was the other other dream project you know i think it would be fun to design shoes for uh like a film or tv production like uh -huh. i i love learning about um about how the costume designers built the character's wardrobe by reading the script and thinking okay what is this person about and uh -huh. I sometimes when I when I'm in a in a creative like um what is it when I'm like kind of stuck creatively I'll I'll pick a um a TV character and like design shoes for them like just oh, sketch shoes fun. for them uh -huh. yeah uh, and so that would be kind of a fun project I think yeah I feel like maybe there's some something local too that you maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know. Sure. I don't. Maybe not right now, though. No, no not <laughs> it's right like, now. But then again, maybe not right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Business side of things. What's your favorite thing about owning your shoe business, and the least favorite thing? I know you wear many hats. You know, you you do everything from, you know, designing, mm -hmm. production management, to sales, to mm -hmm. styling, photo shoots. I actually don't do the the styling or the oh, photo shoots. Ooh. I I have to shout out my friend Maya, uh, who lives locally. She is like my art director staff slash stylist because by the time I have like a collection there and ready to shoot, I'm like out of creative juice. I'm like <laughs> I can't make another visual decision. decision. Yeah. Um, but my favorite part of um, having a shoe business I would say is I love taking my shoes to shows and seeing people try them on and getting their feedback like that's really the best part of the job to me I mean you know luckily it's mostly positive feedback but it's actually really informative too because I'm, I'm sitting here designing like you know in my little office here in Buenos Aires and occasionally friends try them on but otherwise it's all me you know, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. just like trying it on, um, giving myself my own feedback. And <laughs> I, I, I just love like the energy at, um, you know, trunk, sh trunk shows where I, yeah, yeah, where I get to interact with people who, who are trying them on. That's and so then, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I would say my least favorite part is, okay. Whew. Making shoes in Argentina is very, very hard. Maybe that's true anywhere. I think it might be because I've seen you guys. I've seen you guys in some things in the <laughs> yeah. factory, and I'm like, okay, it's not just me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not just you. Yeah, it's not no. just me. Yeah. Um, okay. My the worst thing I think about like being in a shoe business is like, okay, you've gone through all of these steps to bring a shoe to the point of commercialization where it's ready to go on the shelf or ready to get to a customer mm -hmm. and you find a mistake that you can't fix you can't cover up you can't you just the only the only thing you can do is start the shoe back over again which is a huge waste of time and energy and money and that is like I think the days that I do quality control are like <sighs> like yeah. I have to like center myself and like just calm down because I can get really upset <laughs> when, yeah. you know, when I see especially mistakes that could have been avoided. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that's what my... what do you do in those cases? Do you kind of go back a couple steps, 
well, you know, when it's done, it's hard. Do you go and QC like in between the steps too? Or you kind of yes. talk to the artisan and kind of yes. remind yeah. them? We try it. Well, the distance is really a challenge. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, when I see an upper with a sewing mistake, it's like, you know, I feel like you should have known that wasn't okay. You know? Right. You're right. But okay, that's okay. We'll just start over. Catching it at that point is okay. Yeah. Catching it when it's lasted is like, everybody's it's could too have... late. It's right. too late. It's too late. The only thing that can really be changed is like, like small cosmetic flaws and maybe the sock liner, but that's mm -hmm. a big maybe. You can really also mess up. We've messed up so many shoes by pulling, out, pulling up an ugly sock liner. Oh, yeah. Just basically like once you glued anything down, it's too late. Right. You just have to start over and just right. let it go. Like I'm, I'm getting better at just letting it go when, when right. things, it's just like, okay, maybe it'll sell in the sample sale. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And also, I guess, yeah, I guess in a way you do both sampling and production and everything. So mm -hmm. another question would be how much, you know, not excess, but, you know, because it is made to order for mm -hmm. the makers, it's like a one shot project for example say size 41 42 there's one order okay you make it but then what if they do make a mistake in the one half size do you actually give them extra material to like make remedy those mistakes on the spot or do they just call you or there's a system set up where you know they're like okay i made a mistake can i get another half a pair <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes if it comes down to making another half pair, we do do that. But other mm -hmm. times it's like, let's just, okay, let's just finish it and sample sale it. Like just put okay. in the sample sale bin and start it over. You know, right. it's like, it's not good enough to be first quality, but right. you know. And I guess also owning a factory in a way you're owning a factory as well. So that's the hard part of like, how do you pay for the hours that they already had spent, even though it was a wrong product, you know, not wrong. Yet. Well, that's so in some cases, like, okay, so the material is always on us. Like there's really no way to, you know, recover, you know, the loss of material when, right. you know, some of it just got messed up during a bad job. Mm -hmm. um, but usually what happens is that we pay them anyway, and then they have to redo it again. So it's like, double. we get, we get the redos, they get, you know, that's, yeah. that's all you really can do. Yeah. 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 That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But I understand because, you know, yeah. In New York, it was labor, labor was the most expensive and whatever, whatever outcome, we still have to pay for their hour and time. So, yeah yeah that. well here here everyone is paid by by unit by unit mm -hmm. I yeah see. yeah yeah i think that's better way to do it <laughs> for sure well yeah because it's like okay i think it i think it like in, in it kind of encourages everyone to kind of self-check their work Mm -hmm. to some degree yeah but then then you just come across like you know artisans who you know so it just depends on the artisan like the best artisans though really self-check their own work and yeah. and then you also like there's also like we have to set our own level of of our, our own standard of quality yeah. i guess yeah you know yeah. because maybe maybe this guy sees like a flaw in the leather and he sews it and he puts it together anyway thinking it's okay maybe the guy who puts does the the retouching can fix it but no mm -hmm. the guy who does the retouching can't fix it so it's right. like you know it's also kind of a judgment call in everyone's part right. too right do you kind of teach or educate them do you have training um i mean I, honestly i i'm not the best i'm not necessarily the best person to 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 sh train like in the actual skills but i can tell them what it's is acceptable and, yeah. and is not acceptable yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like this yeah. is something that you have to fix when you see because i don't like that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah 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 well, that's good that's good um 
what would you look forward to post coronavirus and what would you do differently do you think the markets will come back um mm, i don't know so i think something i'm looking forward to post coronavirus is definitely photographing um the product again because usually when we do photo shoots it's like a big collaboration of people you know mm -hmm. you have the models and the makeup artist and the stylist and the photographer inside of a studio and that's just a situation that sounds like a coronavirus bomb right now right now you know yeah so i'm definitely looking forward to going back to do to doing um productions um and i think something that we would do differently is probably hi i think we're at the point now where where like we can hire um and as someone to help with the production stuff like because right now mariano is um managing everything but i think that we w we're at the point where we'd like to train someone to like you know drive to place to place do quality control so that we can have more time more thinking time. about things that are that would like you know help us grow a little bit instead mm -hmm. of helping maintain so right. that's something that we would do differently got it got it um where would you want to be and what would you want to be doing in like three to five years in three to five years that's a good question um you know with coronavirus it's everything is just you know turned everything on its head so i think as far as plans go i think it would be wonderful if we're just doing the same thing but better mm -hmm. yeah 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 and, and maybe a little a little bigger maybe more 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 um more units sold like surpassing our sales goals or higher sales goals but nothing yeah. like but i i think really just finding that point where we're like happy with um you know the job feeling creative and also feeling financially secure but not overworked like finding yeah. a good balance good yeah balance. yeah good good and right now if we order on the website mm -hmm. are you guys able to work on them slowly would the lead time be a little slower or the lead time yeah the lead time is a little bit slower so for made to order i think we would need two to three weeks um mm -hmm. if we have something that's listed on uh, as as in production yeah i would say it's more more like two weeks these days <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely <laughs> yeah just because of the logistics <laughs> have any has anybody come to you asking you to do like a private collection or um production for their their yeah line? yeah do yeah you do that actually kind of work Mm -hmm. I I do occasionally. We don't do wholesale because our um we don't do wholesale in the way that like most companies do them. Like I can't sell this shoe wholesale because the margin wouldn't be high enough uh on our end to do that, but uh, and and also to, to support the the suggested retail price. Mm -hmm. Um but we do do branded collaborations. Mm -hmm. Um like it's like I would say we're open to it, but we don't seek them out. Got yeah. It. Um and that's actually that was one big big boost that I got um early on um in, as far as building my audience was um Meg Shop in in Brooklyn place to at the time we thought it was it still I think it's a pretty big order for us but they placed an order for 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 like lots of pairs of shoes and it was a branded collaboration it was like they got to choose the color but in an existing silhouette and that's basically the way we can experiment with wholesale without like selling our souls basically yeah no, yeah <laughs> yeah that's great that's great all right is there a new style in the works at the moment for you um none that are ready to share but right now yeah. i'm working on i'm adding i'm adding uh to the winter collection fun cool yeah Cool. Very cool. Looking forward. Um, another person asked, I'm a one person operation. I realized that I need to outsource key aspects of operations to maximize my strengths and to scale and grow. When did you start working with others to help your business grow? 
Um, well, that's actually something that is um, still a challenge for us. You know, we still do a lot. I mean, it's like I have my partner. We're kind of a team and we do everything except for making the shoes. Um, but I would say you have to start working with others when you're no longer the best person to do something. Like, you know, for example, I've always heard that, you know, maybe PR and marketing is something that you want to outsource, but I think I've also heard a good argument for, you know, in the early stages of your business, you're really the person that should be writing those emails and writing your captions right. and like understanding your audience. So yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's I, a hard one. Yeah. It's a hard one. Yeah. I mean, I know I can tell you the things that, that were like time consuming for me were like anything related to graphic design was like a time suck for me. It's like mm. pushing things around the page. Like maybe, maybe that's good. And, you know, if you have the budget for it, um, definitely a stylist and an art director that will, mm -hmm. that will help photo, yeah. photo editors, things like that. Yeah. 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 Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, all right. I think I'm like, I asked you a lot of questions, but um, I know you're not at your workshop right now. So, but uh, thank you for explaining like how it works also in Argentina, like how there's oh, my pleasure. So many <laughs> people who make shoes, but they're all, all around. And I love your designs. Um, I have, I own thank you. you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and there's also comments. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to just keep on reading some things. Okay. So many great tips. Thank you. And then there's, would you ever do a mass produced line or are you ethically against that? Would I ever do a mass produced line? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know. You see, I think, I'm still trying to figure out like, like how, like, okay, long, long story short, like I'm still trying to figure out how much, how, how big I want my ideal business to be. Like maybe at one point in my career, I wanted, I thought that selling to like Nordstrom's was a dream, but now I'm thinking that sounds like a nightmare. So anything, anything involving the word mass I'm thinking it's not really for me, mm -hmm. but if I did need to produce more shoes than my workshop could handle, I would consider it, but I would have to make sure that like the supply chain is ethical. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's the great thing about having your own line and how you're managing all the factory or makers as well is mm -hmm. that you have control over you know, every single step and like, to a certain point we have, we have limitations of course, but, but it's nice to be able to um, say, I only want to make, you know, X amount of this color instead of being, um, you know, mm. beholden to like minimums, minimums that I can't possibly. Yeah. 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 Great. Great. Yeah. This whole like, ethical fashion sustainable fashion you know i think is something that everybody's aware of now as well as makers you know and i think you're forefront of it part part of the group of makers and designers and brands you know so thanks yeah keep it going i love it and i hope your travel <laughs> ban is going to be you know uh, lifted so that you can travel Again. I hope so too. Yeah, I really hope so too. I can't imagine what that'll be like, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully I'll find out soon. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Thank you so much for sharing your story. No, th thank you for having me on. And I look forward to some new styles. And oh, I'll, stay I'll, tuned. <laughs> yes, and I'll I'll see you on Instagram and everything. Sounds good. And maybe yeah, maybe in real life too. I love it if you come to New York again. Just call her out. I will. I will. Next time I'm in New York, we definitely have to have lunch. Yes, definitely. All right.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.